I'm currently a postgraduate student in electronic engineering department. I graduated from electronic department with a bachelor degree this year. Apart from doing academic research, writing papers, coding, one of the most exciting moments is to share the research happiness with the public. The robotic incubation is a process of utilizing a flexible and driven endoscope designed for minimally invasive nasal procedures offering precise navigation in complex anatomy structures. Enhancing its autonomy is crucial to reduce the burden on surgeons, improve procedure safety, and enable more accurate navigation through narrow and delicate pathways. My final year project was supervised by Professor Ren. I am as improving the autonomy level of flexible robotic endoscope. An autonomous navigating system would allow surgeons to take more attention on diagnosis and therapy, rather than manually control the robot in a non-intuitive manner. You are probably familiar with autonomous driving currently. Most of autonomous driving systems operate at conditional autonomy level, means you need supervision from driver. The fact is, higher autonomy level has supervision from drivers. Similar to autonomous driving, navigating surgical robots could advance towards autonomy, assuming the shape of tendon-driven robotic endoscope is the agent. Its mission is to navigate through our gastrointestinal tract for diagnosis and therapy, starting from our natural organs such as mouth. I use a neural network to mimic the structure of the brain. It can process the perception from environment and output an action through trial and error process. It, it interacts with tissues using experience, update its brain to be smarter. The training result in simulation physics engine is in high navigation accuracy with robust performance, even if external disturbance exists. My postgraduate study will focus on reducing the gap from simulation to reality, make it possible to deploy the preacher brain to real surgical endoscope. I envision a future where the autonomous surgical robotic system becomes a reality. During the final year project, I cooperate this project with TO from Stanford University and present this research project in Modis Gale Medical Robotic Center Symposium. I also share the research progress to professors, peers from different departments, and the public through capstone project presentation competition and one creative award. I went to America this summer as an undergraduate visiting student. The exchange program was founded by engineering faculty. Dr. Dan was previous alumni of the electronic department, currently a master's student in Stanford University. He shared his study and life experience with me. My lab mate, Tio, introduced his research lab to me. I also participate in a continual robotic workshop provided by NASA. The next stop in America is Northwestern University as a research intern, supervised by Professor Ping Wu in one of the most prestigious manufacturing labs in the world. I gained practical experience of metal cutting and machine shop at school at a red diamond cutting machine at a research lab. The hands-on experience provided me more in-depth understanding of how reflective wave spectrum produced through a structural metal surface. The hands-on experience in the Chinese University of Hong Kong during an undergraduate study helped me build up my research interest. I built my first robot in the ELEG 2700 course and the second one in the syntax during my second year of undergraduate study. I participated in STEM internship in my third year summer building a real-time streaming magnified camera system a Raspberry Pi, which is essential to collect specific data for AI training. The knowledge learned from the embedded system taught by our department can directly deploy in practical. During my third year study, it was a great experience of doing research project with Professor Bruce Sherry. This project was to deploy blind source separation algorithm to hyperspectral data such that the source from the image can be directly separated without prior knowledge or training. I love physics, mathematics, and chemistry in my middle school. At that time, I actively participated in research-related training. That's why I chose electronic engineering as my first major. Studying in CHK, I found my research interest and grow practical and coding abilities. Now, I'm a postgraduate student in electronic engineering departments. 
I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to the Chinese University of Hong Kong and Princeton Middle School for supporting my academic growing and enriching my life experiences. 咁多中學同埋大學嘅經歷，啱啱有個 PhD， 不如講翻自己嘅感受先啦。我今問過，推唔推薦大家讀完本科之後去進修？我觉得一定要了解翻自己嘅兴趣，了解翻自己适唔适合进修。如果好多好中意同人 social 而唔中意对住文字，咁更系揾翻同人 social 嘅工作咧。读 PhD 系要静下心，对比翻而家大部分大学生都系读完本科即刻出去揾工嘅 ，PhD 会比本科仲辛苦，而且得到嘅津贴冇出边揾工人工咁高嘅。香港嘅就业机会多，呢啲嘅同学可以去唔同嘅行业。朋友啱啱同我分享话，一开始入行嘅人工都唔低，所以如果揀读 PhD 嘅话，一定要揀自己有兴趣嘅方向，做自己中意嘅研究，唔好将读 PhD 考虑成翻一份工，而系一种投资自己嘅方式，不断学习新科技、新知识。咁我成绩系咪好好呢？其实唔系嘅。我身边大部分同学成绩都系好过我。我啱啱入学大学嘅时候系冇奖学金，成绩普普通通。第一年系冇 d e l i s t 我自己对自己嘅了解就系、是，诶、呃，我乜都乜都想学，乜都想试下。呢个系我好特特别嘅地方嚟。咁啱啱好大学乜都可以学，呢化咗读书嘅兴趣，成绩先慢慢开始变翻好少少。咁学校嘅 professor 都好好嘅。而唔会觉得我二年班、三年班我乜都唔识，唔俾机会我去做。我先慢慢开始认识科研，咁我开始谂，可能读书多适合自己，可以俾自己试下。而家仲年轻，冇乜负担，可以试下呢条路适唔适合自己行。如果唔适合，就去搵工。讲翻转头，如果去翻工嘅话，好大机会都唔会再静下心读书噶啦。如果觉得读书系啱自己嘅话，不妨喺大学嘅期间去试下唔同嘅 project。先決定進唔進修。我係做軟體機器人、人工智能控制方向，係一個好有挑戰嘅方向。我覺得值得用一段好長嘅時間去做研究